to my channel and welcome back to my hysterectomy recovery series. Things are relatively back to normal. I mean, I still feel things and whatever, but I haven't really written a whole lot down because there hasn't been a whole lot worth noting. And I predict that from this point, there isn't going to be a whole lot to discuss. So I think this will be the last video of the series. So we are just gonna jump right into my week eight recovery. So the main topic of this video, actually the whole topic of this video is going to be a mature one. It's going to be about sex. So if you are not somebody that wants to listen to conversation about that, or you are not somebody who should be listening to conversation about that, please click right out of this video because that's basically the only new thing that has really happened in week eight. I will start um, before I get into that whole bit. I have lost 14 pounds since the day before my surgery to now. I've lost 14 pounds, which is crazy to me because I don't really see it. I see it a little bit in my arms and I can't discuss if that is exactly related to surgery, if it's related to a tremendous amount of stress, if it is related to my diet and lifestyle. Um, it probably is all three of those things combined, but I don't want to give any unrealistic expectations. But like I have said before, this is my journey and other people have completely different journeys. You know, my recovery has been relatively easy, relatively pain free. There's been no complications. Whereas other women, some women have extreme pain, especially in the beginning. They have discomfort for months, some even up to a year. Some people can't have sex for 12 months. Like it is so individualized to each person, obviously individualized. Um, but this is just my experience. I will say that before I got the surgery, I was already doing intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, I'm not gonna get into it in this video really, because that's not what this video is about, but it is a proven, healthy, effective means of weight loss. And I wasn't necessarily doing it for weight loss purposes, although I did want to lose a little bit. I just was starting to not feel like myself. I was feeling out of body, but I did want to lose a little bit of weight, but mainly I was just doing it because it naturally fit into my lifestyle anyways. I typically don't eat in the morning only because I used to force myself to eat. Uh, but I found that I didn't, I was getting sick in the morning, like my body wasn't prepared to have food in the morning. So I would go about my day, I would wake up, take the kids to school, work out, do whatever ever I needed to do and I wasn't eating. So I just figured, well, at least let me do it intentionally. But again, I also dealt with something that was very traumatic, very stressful in my life and I did not eat for three days and I don't, I don't recommend that, I'm not, encouraging that in any way, it just was what it was. I skipped food for three days, I lost a good amount of weight then, but then I also gained that right back when I started eating again. But stress does take a toll on your body, and now where I'm at, just with surgery and with recovery mentally, um, I am more intentional about what I'm eating, when I'm eating it, and I'm not just like, I'm not allowing stress and emotions to overcome me and just snack and whatnot. So I am being intentional about what I'm eating. So I just wanted to put that out there. I've lost 14 pounds. That's a lot of weight for me. I was like close to 150 and now I'm like 132, but I'm not unhealthy by any means. I have shown my body nothing is unhealthy, uh, but there, you know, that happened. So after my week seven doctor appointment, I told you guys that I was cleared for sex. I did not have sex that night, but I believe it was the next day and I have since had sex probably five, four to five times. And it is definitely something that I was not prepared for the anxiety that came with it. I had heard people were super anxious about it, but I felt good, my body felt good, so I was ready. However, when the time came, and I'm, you know, obviously I'm not gonna get too deep into it, that's a personal thing, but when the time came, I did have anxiety. All of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, like stuff was taking taken out of my body. I started to get a little nervous about the cuff because you hear of cuff damage, which by the way, don't let that scare you. If you read forums online or you are in Facebook groups, you're gonna hear a lot of things like, don't damage the cuff, don't damage the cuff, like you can damage the cuff.
But if you bring it up to your doctor, most doctors will laugh at you because it is so rare to do damage to the cuff that it's not something to worry yourself sick about. But when it came to sex and penetration, it was something that I was a little anxious about. But I just told myself, the doctor checked you, the doctor cleared you, it's gonna be okay. If he's confident, you can be confident. And that thought process changed my mindset completely. So I did have sex and afterwards there was a little bit of blood. It was, I'm gonna say the most blood that I've had the entire recovery, but even still it was so minimal. It was kind of that thing like you could tell that something was irritated. I would wipe, there was a pinkish tone to the toilet paper, but then it stopped. I didn't bleed the rest of the time. There was no like blood gushing. There was no drops of blood. It was just that little bit of irritation that my body had clearly gone through. I don't know why I feel so awkward talking about this because part of my thing with wanting to talk about this is to normalize the conversation. There is nothing unnatural or weird or awkward about sex. Uh, but I also want to be mindful of just, it is something very personal and deeply intimate between you and your partner, you and yourself, whatever. And so it is, it's, but I'm going to talk about it. I'm here. And a lot of you have thanked me for that in emails telling me your videos have been the most thorough I have found. And that was the point of these videos because people didn't talk about this stuff. People didn't talk about constipation. They didn't talk about having sex for the first time and, and the anxiety that came with it. So I want to be that resource for you. So I will tell you a little more detail. Deep, pen deep penetration has been and still is I had sex yesterday, it still is uncomfortable. And sometimes to the point where if it happens, I kind of jolt, it's painful. Oh, okay, we let's not go there. Um, so it is where, you know, the cuff is pushing against that. There is some irritation, it feels inflamed. And I'll just put that out there. My husband said that the first few times my vagina felt swollen and now it doesn't feel like that. So. And also he said that he has felt he can feel the stitches and he can feel when he is pushing up against the cuff. But from what I understand, all that stuff kind of stretches back out to normal eventually anyways. And the stitches obviously come out around the six month mark for most people. But we have found that changing positions, doing things a different way, eliminates that. It's all about angles, figuring out what's comfortable for you. I have heard from some women that being on top actually helps because they can control kind of the depth, the speed, everything is in their hands. I can't even imagine. I have not tried it because the thought process just, it gives me anxiety. So we just kind of worked around things that are comfortable and not comfortable figuring it out. The first few times I did take pain medicine beforehand, not, not um, uh, oxycodone, but something like an ibuprofen. Like I've taken some kind of mild pain medication beforehand just to help with the anxiety of the thought of pain. But it has been all right. I will say that I'm still having the same. I've heard that a lot of women have problems in producing um, lubrication. I have not had that problem. Everything is normal, but again, I have my ovaries. I haven't had any problems having orgasms, and in fact, I've had, I feel like I've never had a problem orgasming. I can do it multiple times within a session. Um, but I think that now it feels a little stronger. It feels a little more intense. And I think maybe some of that comes from one, not having anxiety about feeling pain during intercourse and two, not having pain during intercourse. So I can have intercourse without things feeling like, I mean, the things that I felt before just were not something that women should feel. Like my uterus being tilted, I could feel like clicks, like click, 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 like popping. It didn't feel normal. It wasn't always enjoyable. I learned to work around that for the most part, but I think just my mind is at ease knowing that I don't have to do that anymore. And that's all that's really happened in week eight. I had sex again and things are kind of back to normal in that, you know, that, that part of my life. Um, for the most part, I think life is pretty much back to normal. I have times like yesterday, uh, I can't remember what caused it, but I was doing something during the day and I just, oh, I was helping at my kid's school. I was helping 
volunteering at the school. I was going up and down steps. I wasn't lifting anything, but just the walking up and down the steps. I did feel fatigue at the end of the day. Like I felt like I was done. Can we, can I go to bed? Um, but for the most part, it's still just dealing with fatigue. I am going and getting back or I have a gym membership, I'm canceling that one and getting a gym membership out of town that has classes so I can start being active, can start just being more motivated because I feel like I don't want to, I don't want to be in the mindset anymore of I've had a hysterectomy, I'm recovering, I want to be in the mindset like that happened, yes I'm here, I still have to be mindful but I want to get back to my life and I want to be healthy and feel good and just do things for me again. So I guess this is where I close out this video and I tell you guys thank you so much for following my journey. Thank you for trusting me as a resource for your own journey. Thank you for sending me your emails and your comments on the blog and comments on these videos letting me know your experience and keeping me in the loop with that and just creating exactly what I wanted to create which is a community of support of women who have gone through this, who are going through this, who are experiencing different things. And I urge you, or I encourage you, to continue, you know, leaving your thoughts down below. Continue telling me about your journey because who knows, in a year from now, I might be experiencing things that I'm not experiencing now and I might come back and share them with you. Um, I love hearing from other people. It just feels good. It helps me with recovery. It helps me to know that I'm helping someone else. And I'm just really super appreciative and I would appreciate if you would share these videos with anybody who is going through it themselves or alongside you. I think this will be the last video of this series unless something else happens and I want to report it to you guys. So be sure to subscribe to this channel for more. Be sure to visit the blog if you want to see more detailed broken down posts about my hysterectomy journey. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.